Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the difference between turn rate and turn radius. Now, that's one of those things that's like, oh, sounds like that's going to be some pretty fun time today. But believe it or not, it's one of those things that's subtle but kind of important for almost everything that we do in piloting. And so first of all, um, how do we turn a plane? And, uh, one of the classic questions that they always say, kind of a thing like that. I think I've got this guy going on a long speech here. We'll go ahead and fix that real quick. And we're good to go. So uh, one of the things that we see is, of course, we're going to we always tilt the plane in the direction that we want to travel. So, for example, if I want to travel over here towards the north, I'd simply tip my plane in that direction. Now, when you tip a plane, you have to remember that that component of lift that is making you go up is now being converted to also help turn us. It actually starts rotating the direction that you want to travel. Uh, when we're done with the turn, of course, so we just simply tilt the control the other way, level the plane off, and uh, once you've done that, all of the lift in the aircraft now is being concentrated upward Okay, I'm not actually doing that. That's uh, something that the plane is doing. Go Microsoft! All that energy that was uh, normally being converted into turning us is now being converted into making us go forward. Now, there's another more subtle aspect to turning that some people forget, and that is how much you have to load the plane in order to ensure that a turn does not result in any altitude. Now, anybody with a pilot's license will tell you, the mover mover they always practice that on, of course, is uh, steep turns, where you go ahead and tilt the plane on nice and steep like this, and then you go pull back. And then, of course, uh, for those who are the uninitiated here, you start tugging really, 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 really hard. And did you just hear a little squeal? Oh, it sounds like that thing squealed a few times. What was that about? What was that squealing noise? Yes, that is a stall. Now, the reason I want to bring that up, and this is going to be a very important point, especially in the next video, is that little stall right there is because if you try to go ahead and pull your controller back in order to maintain that extra lift, as you've increased that bank angle, you're also increasing the load of the aircraft, something that's going to be important. So let's go ahead and differentiate between the two here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by executing a standard rate turn. And we're going to go ahead and do that at about, uh, this looks like a pretty good speed. I'll go ahead and reduce power a little bit, so we're doing about 2,500 RPM. Looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tip the plane, and it'll bring us into a standard rate turn. Now, standard rate turns are defined as turns that take us two minutes to do a 360-degree turn. Now, as I'm taking this turn, what I want you to observe is the size of the turn that I take. So we've got the little street sitting there right below us. And again, I'm just going to let the plane uh, kind of sit here gently working its way around. It wants to climb a lot because uh, we picked up a little bit of energy in our climb here. And again, we're just maintaining that. You can see roughly the town that I'm traveling around real quickly. So you can just get a feel for just how wide of a turn that I'm making here. Again, general, I can see there's that little kind of a building down there on my left. You got that main street kind of sitting there behind me, just as I enjoy my little turn at about 2,500 miles here. And just get an idea for how wide of a turn that we're doing. And again, this is just a standard rate turn. So this means that my entire turn is going to take exactly two minutes to finish, assuming that, you know, I stop going inside and out and enjoy it. Now notice my total radius of the turn is actually fairly significant here. Well, you can see the entire town is basically chilling to my left as I'm going around here making that turn. So let's go ahead and level the aircraft off. I'm actually going to pick up my turn a little bit here, and we're going to go ahead and increase it. Pull a little bit of a steepy here in order to get myself lined up back with the town. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same energy in my turn. So I'm going to leave my RPM at about 2,500 like I did before. But this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a double rate turn. Now what I want you to observe is how much ground I suck up when I do this maneuver. So there's going to be my single rate. Uh, that's going to be standard right there. And I'm just going to go one past it to that. So that's going to be basically, if you want to think about it another way, a double rate turn. And you can see here that the distance I'm actually traveling, my turn radius, is significantly smaller. As a matter of fact, the two are more or less proportional to each other, I'm basically staying in one spot. Uh, one thing that I always wish a flight sim had was a little ability to show you kind of a little 3D view, and you could see it. So you can see my new circle that I'm creating here is basically hovering around one spot on the ground. Now, if we had a little less Microsoft turbulence here, I could hold this real smooth for you. But you know what it's like. So the key thing here is now that we've doubled that, we've increased it. But at the same time, as remember when I was talking about that rate before, we've also drastically increased the load on the plane. Okay, so let's go ahead and slow down. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring the plane all the way down. Slow it way, 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 way down. All the way down. All the way. Let's get going. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we just did a moment ago. The only wrinkle is I'm going to be traveling at a completely different speed than I was traveling at a few moments ago. All right, let's get nice and slow, nice and slow. Again, we want to get basically into slow flight here. So we were traveling at about 100 knots for that previous turn that you probably saw a few moments ago. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring us down to about 50 knots, which is about half the speed. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I tip my plane over to the right, and I'm going to go ahead and execute a standard rate turn. What I want you to observe is the uh, very, very couple simple things. First of all, notice what my bank angle is in order to make a standard rate turn now. The second thing I want you to observe is notice at this speed that the size of my turn is now smaller than any turn I have made so far. Let's go back to the standard rate here. Uh, there we go. That looks pretty good right here. So the cool thing here is, yes, we're slowing down a little bit. I have to actually accelerate to kind of catch back up to 50 and give it a pretty good burst there. And that should be enough to kind of stabilize us. We do have flaps, which is helping out a little considerably. But now notice that I've halved the speed. You'd say, oh, you've halved the size of the circle. But you can tell just from looking out my window here as we're traveling very slow is the fact that I didn't have my circle. I reduced it by almost a quarter, which shows you how that is because I'm traveling slower, the amount of distance I'm actually consuming to complete the turn is massively less. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get myself out of the stall, I almost put myself in. And we're gonna go ahead and execute the same turn. Well, again, we'll stay at all 50, but we'll make it a double rate turn. Now remember when I did a double rate before, how far the plane was tilted in order to execute the maneuver. Now notice when I take it, um, I'm barely like, what, 15 degrees? It's almost a, basically half of what I had before. But look at how tiny of a circle in the air I am currently making because of how fast I'm actually traveling. I'm just not going as fast. Now that I've got that extra bank in, I'm basically hovering in one spot at a time. Now, what some people, of course, say is, I want you to just bang this thing right into a steep turn. Uh, that'll definitely solve your problem. Um, that's not necessarily going to go well for us, uh, because if I bang it right into a steep turn and start pulling, you're going to hear, oh, there we go, there we go. And that's going to be a very, very important problem for us uh, for the next video, when we have to maneuver in very, very tight spaces. So as you can see, uh, your speed has a massive impact on how wide of a turn you take. The other thing, of course, is going to be your bank angle. And then finally, and it's really important, as you just saw us almost spoil real bad a second ago, the more that bank angle gets added in, the more likely you are to stall. So if you're in a situation when you're going really, really fast, and you're like, oh, I'm just going to increase this and pull back harder, you could actually find yourself in a worse situation that, of course, could result in a potential crash if you're not quick enough to catch it. Woo! That was a good one right there. Excellent. Enjoy.